Good morning. Today we look at 1 Kings 10 and 11. And as chapter 10 begins, the Queen of Sheba comes to visit King Solomon. She has heard of his wisdom and of his fairness and of all of the good things about him. And she comes to see if it's true, if he is really, you know, all that she hears about. And she came, it says, with a very great tribute to him, camels bearing spices, much gold, precious stones. And when she came, she told him all that was on her mind, and he answered all of her questions. And there was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. So, I mean, she must have had a lot of questions, a lot of things that were on her mind. That, uh, But he answered everything to her satisfaction. And it says, when she observed all of the wisdom and all that he had, you know, then he offered, uh, when he offered all of the house of the Lord, it says there was no more spirit in her. And I, I don't understand that really. I mean, when he, you know, he explained all her questions and I mean, it's just a, a, a strange, strange phrase is to me, you know, I mean, you know, she was, she was satisfied with everything that, that he had said to her. And, and they have this, you know, conversation and she gives him all of this tribute and everything that she brings. And, and, uh, verse 13, where it says, meanwhile, King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba every desire she expressed, as well as what he gave her out of Solomon's royal bounty. And then she returned to her land with her servants. And as we get into the next chapter, it's going to kind of, agree with this supposition that, you know, with it says that he gave her all that she desired is that he also gave her an offspring to take home, you know, a, a child in her womb. And that this child then became king of Sheba after, after she was. So then that the reign of David continued on in the land of Sheba. Uh, I mean, there's no definite proof of that, but as we, you know, you but when we get into the next chapter, it's going to kind of sound, yeah, it's probably very, very realistic. Um, and then it talks about, you know, the weight of gold that Solomon got, 666 talents of gold. I mean, tremendous wealth. And he had ships that went out trading. You know, they'd be gone for nearly a year at a time trading, and they would come home with, with you know, all of, you know, all of the profits and the proceeds of a very productive year. And, and you know, it said that, you know, the, the fleet of ships, once every three years, the fleet would come back bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. And apes and peacocks, and a different version says baboons, apes and baboons, you know. And so they not only brought, you know, wealth, and, you know, gold and silver and, and other things that way but you know they, they brought animals back and um it just i mean one of those it just seems strange to me that they would bring you know apes and peacocks or baboons whichever your version of your bible may say of you know different life animals that way and it, you know thus king solomon excelled all of the rest of the kings and and they all brought presents you know and everybody all of the rest of the kings looked up to solomon and his wisdom, and his wealth, and his rule, and he was reigning over all of Israel at this time. And, you know, it said he had 1,400 chariots, 12,000 horses stationed with the chariots, and um, a chariot could be imported from Egypt for 600 shekels, and a horse for 150 shekels, and, and you know, the, the wealth that, you know, is attributed to him is, is just extensive and um, but again it is one of the ways that it shows God's blessing of his people and you know throughout the Old Testament many times you know the the blessing of land of of cattle of sheep of you know flocks and herds was was considered a, a blessing of God if you were favorable to God faithful to God you know God blessed you with with wisdom and and riches and then chapter 11 begins, uh, talks about some of the downfalls of King Solomon, about some of the, the, the dark side of, of the reign of King Solomon. It starts out that he had 
loved many foreign women among the daughter of Pharaoh, who was he was married to, and a bunch of different nations. And, and verse 3, among his wives were 700 princesses and 300 concubines. A, a, a thousand wives? I mean, it, it's, it's just absolutely astronomical to even think about that. But when he's got, you know, when he when he loved all these different women, you know, uh, from all of these different nations, it's it's it really puts it into perspective that this Queen of Sheba could easily ha have gone home with an heir, you know, with a child in her womb from Solomon. That you know, because he, with all of this that was you know talked about here, and and the problem with this is then that all of these women from these different nations had different gods that they worshiped. They didn't all worship the Lord God. And they turned him away, turned Solomon away from the Lord God who blessed him so richly, so 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 much. And and he built altars to some of these different um different gods. You know, it says he built a high place. Well a high place was an altar and this is where you would go and you would worship these false gods. And it I think it, you know, uh, Verse 6, so Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not completely follow the Lord. And he built a high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites. And, and he did the same for all of his foreign wives. So you think about that. If he had 700 foreign wives and he would build a temple, a, a high place of worship for each of them. I mean, why wouldn't God be angry, upset? Do you know, I mean, why would why would God say, "Oh, you've been such a good boy"? You no, know, but um, and it says, verse nine, the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord. Uh, you know, it reminds us that the Lord had spoken to Solomon twice, but the Lord says, you know, the, you know, that Israel, because of this unfaithfulness of Solomon, that that you know these other adversaries then come up and. And the, the final one that's talked about, starting at verse 26, is Jeroboam. And as Jeroboam was leaving Jerusalem, a prophet, Abijah, uh, Ahijah, uh, talked to him and told him that, you know, you will become king. And he took this deal, he tore it into 12 pieces and told him, take 10 of them. And these will be the 10 tribes of Israel that you will rule over. But there will be one tribe that will be left for David, for Solomon's son to reign over. And so again, we have the division of the northern kingdom and Judah coming up again because of this unfaithfulness of, of Solomon. Um, but start, I just, I jumped ahead a few verses because in verse 14, you know, it mentions some others that come up against Solomon. The Lord raised up an adversary Hadad, the Edomite, you know, and you know, the Lord raised up against him. And it is, so it's showing the Lord's displeasure with Solomon. And, um, and, and then there's, you know, verse 23, God raised up another adversary against Solomon, Rezo, son of Elidia, uh, you know, and he gathered these people against him. And, but it was from Jeroboam, who was an Ephraimite, um, a servant of Solomon, um, that the biggest threat was to come. And not only a threat, but, you know, as Solomon dies, um, Jeroboam does then become king over many of the lands of, of Israel. And it's, you know, you know, verse 15, you know, God is speaking uh, I will take the kingdom away from his son and I will give it to you. That is the 10 tribes. He's speaking to this Ahijah, the prophet. Um, you know, I will take it, take away the 10 tribes yet to his son. I will give one so that my servant David may have a lamp before me in, in Jerusalem. You know, and so God is, even though Solomon has been unfaithful and God is angry with him. So God is still going to honor his promise to Solomon, to David, going way back to Moses and Abraham and all through the history that God is going to remain true and faithful, even though the people aren't. And, and, 
And um, I think it's in Hebrews that you know, God is faithful even when we are. He, he can't be anything but faithful. And God will always look at us with love and grace. And, but it, you know, the promise to uh, Jeroboam, if you will listen to all that I command and walk in my ways and do what is right, I will be with you and I will build an enduring house as I built for David. And I will give Israel to you. And so here's, you know, God speaking through the prophet to this Jeroboam. And as we end chapter 11, and our reading for today, the rest of the Acts of Solomon would be written in the, in the book of the Acts of Solomon. And then verse 43, Solomon slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of his father David. And his son Rehoboam succeeded him. So, you know, as much as Solomon found a lot of favor with God, Solomon wasn't true to God. As much as Solomon, you know,